Hi guys, welcome to some Europa Universalis 4. I have decided to really try and get back into this. Um, I, I want to get back into making videos for YouTube and uh, just some a lot of things have been happening lately. I'm, I'm in my own apartment now and um, so that's that just I don't know life has been really really stressful lately but I think that it's beginning to stabilize I feel like it's beginning to stabilize so because of that I really am really am into making videos and so I really wanted to wait to start a new campaign until Rights of Man came out for EU4. This is EU4 is not the only game that I'm going to do for my channel, but it is going to be one of them. And I'm not going to be playing as Ming. I know I've selected Ming, but um, but I really I I've played around with Rights of Man a little bit, and it is super fun. I am super happy about this expansion. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited. And, um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have, um, some kind of, like, schedule, I'm going to try to have a schedule, where I'm going to, uh, like, upload five videos a week, okay, and, sorry, I was sitting getting a timer ready. I'm going to have about five videos a week, and I'm going to try to do, like, maybe EU4 two out of those five days, but then uh, the other three days I'm going to do different games. And, yeah. So, in this campaign, what I wanted to do is I wanted to play as a Chinese miner, and I, in particular, I wanted to play as my favorite Chinese miner, which is called Miao. And they start out in a peculiar position, one of the only two animist countries in China. And uh, I'm gonna try and like destroy Ming before I like get involved with Miao. But also before I do that, I want to yeah, fantasy random new world is set to frequent. I want I want it to be frequent. I also want to have normal difficulty, not hard. And if we fail this campaign, then we fail. And I'm going to post everything. So, because previously in certain games, I would start recording some videos and I would fail. And then I just would never upload anything. But I'm going to upload everything and I might fail horribly. But then you guys will at least see it. And then maybe we could try again. So, uh, I, I want my goal for this is... Um, my goal, one of my goals for the schedule is I, I want to like have another uh, campaign where it's an AI only campaign, but I want to set up a game with completely random nations and it's like I want to set up a nation with, um, hang on, I am now, I want to start, what is that? I don't know. I, I want to start a, a campaign where I set up a custom nation with 200 points and see if I can get it to a point where it'll survive. And then after that, just see what happens. And we can have voting on which which nation you think is going to do the best and which is going to stay you know, the most ahead in, of time and tech. So I'm start my timer right now. And we are going to go ahead and just... Let's rival Japan. Okay, let's make our, let's just disinherit the air. Well, okay, not yet. But I will insult Korea, because Korea is always friendly. I don't want Ming to have any alliances. Some say this is a little bit gamey, but I don't care. Insult them, insult them. I'm going to uh, debase my currency as much as I can. I'm going to take as many loans as I can. I can have up to 24 loans. Can no longer take any loans, okay? So I'm losing tons of money. Delete all my troops. 
and then delete all my ships. Uh, anything else? Hire advisors, maybe? The AI is just going to fire the advisors, but... And then I, I want to... Um, I want to use one of my diplomats to send all of my money to Mongolia. Mongolia is going to get a nice big paycheck. I wish I could increase this by a thousand each time. That would be nice. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to disinherit the heir, so hopefully they'll lose the mandate of heaven. Oh my gosh, man. This is insane. And I'm going to release all of the Ming vassals. They're all going to be released. <clears throat> okay, that's as high as I can go. Send. No, <laughs> there's none. I just have no money. I'm about to go bankrupt next month. Okay, uh, then... <clears throat> I need to release, not Dali, not yet, Changsheng, which recently got Chinese ideas. Yu, Min, uh, not yet, not Min first, Ning first, no, 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 actually yes, Min first and then Ning, I'm doing this strategically, Ning, okay, we're not going to release Chu at all. Uh, C is going to have to wait. Meow is going to be last. E I can release. Um, Shu, yes. Wu, I'm going to wait. I think there might be a way for me to give them less provinces, but Tang always gets released. Liang, I also want to release Qin right now. Shin can get can get three provinces, but if you don't, if you're not careful, then they only get one province. And I want each each vassal to be as balanced as possible. Except I I want the vassals near Miao to be weak, as weak as possible. So that's what I'm going to try for. Yan. Now normally they they actually do have a, a core on Beijing, but since it's my capital, yeah. Jin. And Shun and Qi and Wu, yes, Wu, and then C. Okay, and I believe that's it. I could just re like return province to Chu. Yeah, I could do that. And then I'm gonna release. Well, oh yeah, I want to disinherit my heir. I can't because I have. Zero I have less than zero prestige. I really would like to do that, but at least what I can do is make my heir my my ruler a general. I can also get a general and an admiral, and I can even let's like develop some crappy province like Andong. I can't. Is there any province I can develop? Yes, I can. Hey, John, and that's in. Oh, can I develop one of these? No. Oh well. Yeah, hit on, I guess. And now I have no monarch points. Now I'm going to release. Oh no, no. Release Dali as well. I forgot about that. And release Meow and play as them. Alright. So we are Meow. And this campaign, I, if it goes well, I'm going to call it the Beast of the East campaign. Um. And apparently this needs to be turned into a state. So that's a state. And what can I do? I th now what I want to do probably is become a theocracy. Um, create an army for our nation is probably the best idea right now. We're going to have inflation problems big time. And so the first idea group I think I'm going to take is probably economic and just rush that that inflation reduction and even so it's still going to be increasing so okay so yeah Ming is going to be just wrecked they're going to be wrecked so hard let's wait for the month to tick over because I don't oh nice 
I don't think uh, Ming I don't, can. I don't think the AI can tighten up its budgeting enough. Um, where's it? Its stability. Well, wait. <laughs> wait a second. Does it actually still have the mandate of heaven? Let's just make sure these. This is set to best guess. So that if it does, if they do go bankrupt, what? Well, how are they not bankrupt? I, I don't understand. Country. That's their treasury. No, let's. Well. Uh, Ming. Ming, ten ducats of income, seventy-nine ducats in the treasury. Somehow. I don't know what's I don't know what's going on. Anyway, that's fine. But we got a 424 ruler which is um decent for our first ruler. It's it is randomly generated, so um let's just do all the stuff with the estates. I don't really want to give my estates anything right now, so let's just do with the 50 power. And let's just ask for some money here and seek support of the clergy and demand admin support. So we've got that. And then I want to say our force limit is only four. So let's do three infantry and one cavalry. And I do believe there's a new now idea. Yeah, army tradition from battles. That is going to come in handy I believe because army tradition is usually really difficult for me to actually get so we are Mao and as Mao we have some very unique awesome ideas currently we have a truce with Ming so even if they did go bankrupt then we wouldn't be able to do anything um, now I believe Korea doesn't really like yeah they don't like Ming because we insulted them so as Meow, we have some very unique ideas. Let's take a look at them. As our tradition, we have, or as our traditions, we have fort maintenance minus 10% and goods produced plus 10%. That's useful because our capital is a gold mine. Since it's our capital, it will never have any autonomy. And so it's, it's useful for money, especially in the beginning. But, uh, I mean, as far as inflation, that's not too good but uh, yeah so get that uh, we got tolerance of the true faith plus two which is cool because we are animist which already gives plus one and minus one national unrest I do plan to stay animist next one is minus one national unrest let, let me just read these okay sacrificing the spirits in our culture ancient traditions are still running strong let us sacrifice wine meat and rice to foster the faith of our people and the righteous worship of our ancestors the spirits and gods of nature then we've got dragon boat festivals our yearly dragon boat festivals follow an old tradition being organized by the clan chiefs and monarchs to be as splendid and exquisite occasions as possible they take our people's minds of off their sorrows it's a typo we've got Unity of the tribes, morale of armies plus 10%. The Miao are divided into several tribes, only barely held together by our common culture, language, and history. Welding together the Hmong, Li, Yao, and the white, red, blue, and black Miao would mean that our armies could be coordinated much more efficiently. Miao silver plus one yearly prestige. The Miao are renowned silversmiths, having devised a smithing technique based upon a specific silver alloy, the secret of which we jealously guard. Our famous jewelry will help us spread our fame. Customary marriage laws. Our tr oh no, it's plus, or it's minus 10% uh, stability cost modifier. Our traditions dictate that no Miao, hold on, I get this that no Miao may marry outside of his tribe. Whilst this decreases the freedom of the individual, the intra-tribal bonds are strengthened and sustained through this. Okay. Mountain retreats. This is awesome. This is an awesome uh, event. 
Mountain retreats. Most of the Miao live in highly, highly mountainous areas. We should be able to use the terrain and our knowledge of it to protect ourselves from enemy assaults. Attrition for enemies plus one. And then we've also got Legacy of the Miao Rebellions. The Miao have always been a rebellious lot. We proved our worth as mighty and courageous warriors and our many uprisings against our Chinese overlords. We should utilize the experience learned from our past endeavors and its army tradition for battles plus 50%. And then our ambition is plus 15% national manpower. So that is excellent. And I'm just going to gain the base tax here because I want extra money. And extra base tax is money without inflation. So that's good because well, we're going to have lots of uh, problems with inflation. I remember there was a time in the past where I did very well with Meow. That time, that time was a long time ago. But So I'm in my new apartment, by the way. It's very small. It is called a one room. That's what the Korean people call it. Um, also, I can spend some, some diplomatic points, uh, because it's a brother culture. Let's see, what does it do? Oh, it, it decreases manpower as well, by, t by 15%, and that's not nothing. Um, okay, manpower recovery speed minimum is 100 you never have somebody recovering manpower at less than 100 per month but definitely uh, we want to improve relations with e because they're animus too now with the new institutions let's just take a look at this we start off with a zero percent tech penalty and that is awesome I played around in a in two different Ming games. I played around like me playing as Ming and and the other person, my friend Matthew playing as Korea. And then I also played in a single player Ming game. And um, it's very fun because I was able to just colonize to my heart's content, to my heart's to my heart's content, is that right? Anyway, so I got colonial nations and I was able to actually just develop and earn institutions that way and like embrace institutions that way and I didn't have to get a province adjacent to a European and that was so so cool um, and so because oh oh they did go bankrupt nice holy crap that's our heir She's in. Okay, and we and we got like a kind of less than ideal consort, but she's a free thinker. Um, yeah, it was really really cool because if we take a look at these institutions, feudalism is what we start with, and it's what most countries in the world start with. Tribal Indian miners um, don't start with it, but it's spreading there. Tibetan countries do not start with it. And the steppe hordes, of course, and then of course the Timurids, and the Arabians, and the West Africans, and East Africans, and Central Central Africans. They do not start with feudalism, so they start with a 50% tech penalty. Also, uh, Native Americans. Okay, and this gives you an extra general, which is awesome. Renaissance appears in 1450, so we have until 1450. Uh, with this perfect 0% tech penalty. That starts in Italy. So that is guaranteed to start in Europe, which means it's kind of like a like a one-up on the rest of the world. But you could still start your own renaissance by doing development. So that is awesome. And and it just goes the tech penalty just goes up by 1% per year. And my thought is that if our tech penalty is only going up by 1% per year, like we only actually need to embrace the institution when we take the technology so we could just wait on the technology for a while and just develop and hopefully get our own renaissance so anyway um then we've got colonialism which can start anywhere in the world by the way it likely starts in europe but i in my multiplayer game i actually my friend was able to get it to start in korea which is super awesome it actually makes the europeans lag behind 
a little bit, not exactly, because eventually they're going to get some because they have uh, colonies. But printing press is another one that's guaranteed to start in Europe. It starts in Germany, and it spreads out from there. Global trade, uh, it starts in a high development province in the highest value trade node in the game, I believe. But it doesn't spread quite the same way because if you have like trade buildings in your provinces, then it will spread more quickly to those provinces. Manufactory starts in a province with a manufactory, I believe, and it spreads to provinces where you have manufactories. And then the last one is in the Enlightenment, and that one I believe, I've never gotten to that point where it starts, uh, but I believe it starts in either a province that's, the, a, that's a seat in parliament, or if, if it's a high development province uh, whose country's ruler is at least 555 in Europe. So it kind of give pref gives preference toward Europe, but it can start elsewhere, especially by Ming, because if Ming, when Ming reforms their government, they become a constitutional monarchy. And so they have a parliament. So, but anyway, so let's take a look at this. We've got a truce until 1450, and that's about when Renaissance is going to start. Um, Oh yeah, I just realized that like Nepal has a huge advantage over Utsang because they have like a 50% tech penalty. Utsang does. And also, Nepal starts out as a kingdom, whereas Utsang starts out as a duchy. Guj is the only Tibetan country that starts out as a kingdom rather than a duchy. They have that going for them, but not a whole lot else. They have three development and... Uh, just all their territory is uh, mountainous. All the land that they expanded to is going to be mountainous. It's crazy. But I've tried playing as them, but it's it's just so difficult. And I want to make them work eventually, but Anyway, so let's see. Now we also got this great powers thing, and Ming is still the number one great power even after I, um, what's it called? Even after I release everybody, and they actually would be like number nine, I believe, if they, if it didn't count their own, or if it didn't count the subject's development. But it counts half of that, and because of that, they've got a rating still number one. So they have all the goodies that come with that. I'm going to increase the speed, and we probably are not going to be able to do... What? Wait, what just happened? Kam and Nepal. Nepal? Holy crap. We might actually see huge gooch. That's something I've only dreamed of. See huge gooch. Well, I really hope that happens. I really hope gooch becomes a major player. The only thing is, if the AI... If the AI conquers a lot, they're going to form Tibet, guaranteed. But as me, if I were playing Guj, I would not form Tibet. I would just stay Guj. And then you'd, I would post a screenshot on Reddit showing just this just enormous Guj. Also, Korea is conquering. Shanzo. Nice, nice. Also, if you're wondering about the Great Collapse, I also think I want to do a campaign in that, but I have to update it to 1.18, and I have started work on updating the institutions. And actually, let me list those right before, because we don't have much time left in the video, but let me at least list those. Also, uh, while I'm looking for this, I did start up a Patreon page, and I am so committed to, to, to trying to do... Um, videos again that I I want to start up a Patreon page and if I can actually make a lot of money from that then that would be super awesome and I could actually I could actually quit my job and spend more time on YouTube but uh, I mean it's it would be difficult but you know at least something is better than nothing and I would really really appreciate that if you would head over on to my Patreon page so, anyway, okay, so, 
in the Great Collapse, here are going to be the new institutions, okay? Um, the first one is administration, starts in 2550 before the start date, gives you minus 10% state maintenance, um, and the max penalty is 75%, so if you do not start with administration, then you're going to have a 75% tech penalty. You're going to have to, like, embrace it as soon as you can. Next one is military tradition that starts four years after the game start. And it gives plus 0.5 army tradition. And the max penalty is 50%. It starts in a high development capital in uh, Japan or Korea. Spread quicker through countries with large force limits, armies at maximum force limit, and a high army tradition. Next one is cultural revolution that starts... 2720 minus one prestige decay max penalty is only 25 percent starts in a high development province in the balkans usually going to be athens and it will spread quicker through stable countries next one is financial reformation it gives you minus 0.5 interest per annum max penalty is 50 percent starts high province in germany and spreads quicker through countries with no loans or corruption this all this is subject to change by the way but mostly mostly going to be correct infrastructure recovery is next starts in 2820 minus five percent build cost max penalty is 50 percent and it starts in a high development province a high development fort in china and spreads quicker based on how many buildings are in the province uh, then there's firearm dis firearm rediscovery gives plus 10 percent fire damage max penalty is 100 percent starts in a high development province in north america Although it's going to be Iran until I add the American countries, it's going to spread quicker through armies at maximum force limit. And then the last one is warship construction. Starts 2920, max penalty is 50%. Gives you plus 10% heavy ship combat ability. And it will start in Great Britain or possibly northern France and spread like wildfire across ports. So there you go. We've also ended our truce with Ming. So now we can actually form alliances with each other going to start this alliance right now and why is offering me an alliance I don't think so bro I don't think I want an alliance with you why now Dali does have cores on most of or on some of E's land so I'm not gonna ally Dali Shu would be a nice ally but I think uh, Chin I'm gonna I'm gonna try and form an alliance with Chin, and then yes, royal marriage with E. So, um, that's gonna be the end of this episode. If you want, I uh, if you want to head over to my Patreon page and support me, it really encourages me to uh, make more videos. I've I've also got a new logo coming up. Um, yeah, and so I have goals which you can check out on the Patreon page, and special privileges based on how much you contribute so if you like this video please leave a like and i will see you guys in the next episode